everybody. So I gotta tell you a real sad story to begin because yeah, sure. yeah. is that better? Ooh, that sounds better, doesn't it? Sad story as I begin, um, I ordered our stickers two weeks ago, and Amazon is saying that they're not coming yet. So I have no stickers today. I needed a sticker too, Lydia. So I, I'm sorry. Like, I got to apologize that Amazon takes two weeks to deliver something with stickiness on it. I mean, how, how hard is that? I don't know. All right, well, as we begin, uh, let's, let's uh, wake up this, the congregation this morning. What does Frog Club stand for? Fully rely on God. Right, and Frog Club is for everybody, right? Like, you guys are just here this morning because I get a chance to talk to you. But Frog Club is for all of those old fogies out there, too, right? They, yeah, <clears throat> especially John. They, they, they need to fully rely on God as much as we all, the rest of us do, right? We all need to fully rely on God, all right? So, this morning we're going to talk again about spiritual gifts. And I really wanted to do something different today, something out of the norm. I feel like I've been giving you guys like kind of hard truths and it's kind of like a little bit kind of boring. Uh, Not in the sense that it's boring, but just in the sense that it's like a lot of words and stuff. So I want to do something a little bit different. So I filled the Lord's table with all that food over there. You see all that food over there? So what I have over there is the four major food groups... Of our diet, we have some uh, nuts and some Slim Jims representing protein, right? We need, we need protein, big muscles. I got some oranges and I got some carrots representing fruits and vegetables because <laughs> I have some Hawaiian rolls over there. You guys like Hawaiian rolls? I love that. I love that dough. Yes, so I have those over there. And then I have the fourth food group, which is candy. And as we've learned from Elf, you know, that's a major food group. So I brought that as well. Now, I got to have you guys make a decision this morning. These are little appetizers before we uh, have dinner today as a family. But I can only have you choose one food group. You can choose whatever food group you want, okay? But you can only have... Either a protein or a fruit and vegetable or a bread or a candy, okay? Now, there's no judgment. You can take whatever you want, okay? If if you're feeling like today's a Slim Jim day, you you take that Slim Jim, right? You own that thing. Rip it open, dive into it, okay? So on and so forth. So, ladies first, if you're going to, you know, go ahead and grab... A handful of candy or a piece of bread or an orange or a nut, but only one food group, and then bring it back to your seat, okay? Well, you can have more than one carrot. You can have like a couple of carrots, a couple of oranges. Sorry, I didn't qualify that. Yeah. Please. No judgment. Take whatever you like, guys. All right, man, come on up. All right. You can grab two of those, Judah. Come on. All right. Good, 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 good. Now your family members are wondering, where is Pastor Jesse going with this? I'm kind of wondering the same thing. See if we can qualify this. Okay, by a raise of hands, who selected a protein? One, two, three, four. All, all men. All right, men. Might have gone. All right. By raise of hand, who brought? Who bought a orange or a fruit? Or who got a fruit? Orange or fruit? One, two, three. The older ladies. Well done, ladies. Proud of you. All right, who got the bread? Yes, all right. Us little ones, we love starch, right? We love breads, we love breads, good stuff. And who got candy? All right, candy is for everybody, right? That's, that's a good one, all right. So I'm a little bit surprised actually that we had a good mixture of things going on. 
I had quite, quite honestly figured that most of us would go right to the candy. I mean, that's what I would do. <sighs> but you guys surprised me, and that's great. What I want to do is make this extremely um, this extremely wide illustration. It's not a gospel truth or anything. It's just a way of helping us to understand it. As I was driving down the road this week, I'm like, you know, it'd be kind of fun to <clears throat> talk about it in this way. And so what we're talking about is spiritual gifts. And um, whereas some of the spiritual gifts, I believe, as I've said to you in past weeks, that every believer has gotten at least a portion of it. For example, we talked about being merciful. I believe that we all have been given at least a portion of that gift because we're commanded to be merciful to people. I believe also that we have been commanded to go and evangelize the world. So there has to be some sort of the Holy Spirit driving you towards spreading the gospel. So it must mean at some level you have the gift of evangelism by the Holy Spirit somewhere. Okay. Also, I believe that we need wisdom to get through this life and that if we pray... God will give it to us, as James says, God will give it to us abundantly so we can have wisdom. We can have the spiritual gift of wisdom. What I want to talk to you guys more about today is about the roles that people have and how they have been gifted as a spiritual gift to the church. And we find that in Ephesians chapter 4, um, in verse 11, it says, He gave some as apostles and some as prophets, some as evangelists, and some as pastors and teachers. So there's four things, right? It's almost like there's four food groups. There's a protein, there's a vegetable, there's a bread, and there's a candy, okay? I'm going to say that one of these positions is kind of like one of those food groups. Right? Again, it's a, it's a wide illustration, so just humor me here for a minute, okay? So I think that pastors and teachers are kind of like the oranges and the carrots, kind of like the fruits and the vegetables, right? We all need to hear what he says. We all need to study our Bible more. We all need to be edified, but it doesn't necessarily mean that we enjoy fruits and vegetables on a regular basis. You know, like, it's like, come to the table and eat the good stuff. Okay, if I have to, I will, all right? And we have three ladies who made a really good choice by picking the fruits and vegetables, right? It's maybe a sign of maturity there, if you will, uh, that they pick those kinds of things. Now, again, this is a very wide argument, okay? And then he says that he gave some as uh, evangelists. When I think, to think about evangelists, I think about bread, okay? Uh, when Christ was teaching about the kingdom of God, he often uh, fed the people. He fed them in fish and what? bread, right? And as he was teaching the people and sharing about the gospel, sharing about the kingdom of God, he was offering them bread. And really, when we think about who Jesus Christ is, we call him the bread of life, right? There's an important part of Christianity where people are like bread. People just need to give life-sustaining substance to other people so that they can have eternal life and be part of God's kingdom. I would like to say that the prophets there are kind of like the protein, Okay. Like we understand God, we understand faith because of the prophets. They really put the meat on the bones, so to speak, to our faith. Because most of what you read here in the Old Testament has been given to us by someone who was a prophet. All right? He spoke for God because God spoke to him. And his word, their words are articulated here in Scripture for us so that we can learn by them. All right? And the prophets have really put a the meat on our bones, so to speak, of our, on our faith. And without that, you know, we would be much weaker uh, of a believer than we are now because we, we wouldn't understand as much as we do. But God used that, those people, in a very profound way to record his words so that we can live by his words and, and have life. So then we have the last one, which is apostles. Which one do you think is the apostles food group? The only one left, right? It's candy. I, again, I'm making a very st stretchy argument here that apostles are like candy. In other words, everybody likes candy, right? 
Does anybody not like candy here in the audience? Everybody likes candy. And they're really sweet. You know, candy is really awesome. And you get all jazzed up thinking about candy. And the apostles, they bring excitement to the Christian faith. I mean, they, they are like, they can do miracles. They can do healings. Uh, they bring excitement to the church. Uh, everybody loves candy. The reality is some denominations or some churches believe that apostles and the works of the apostles still exist like they did in the early church where like we can still hand out gobs and gobs and gobs and gobs of candy, miracles, healings, and all this type of stuff, which was given through the apostles. And I'm encouraging you as your pastor that that is, that's not the case. Okay. Uh, I believe that the apostles, as we understand them and what they were able to do were for a unique time period in history that God used to show the power of the Holy Spirit and to make the words of the law and the prophets come alive to the people who needed to hear it, okay? It was a special treat, <laughs> if you will, to the people of God to, to have them energized about their faith, to feel the excitement. Ah, it's candy. I love candy. Ah, it's the apostles. I love the apostles. It's so amazing what God can do through these people. But as the years have progressed... The, the need for apostles is just not there. It's almost like if you, can, if you can wrap your mind around it, you could live without candy right now. No, right? Like, no, no. What are you talking? You're crazy talk. I didn't know I was going to come to church and hear crazy talk. I hear you. But you, you could almost, almost live without candy, all right? In the same way, we can really live without apostles in today's age. We don't need the apostles. We see the work was significant and it was important, but it doesn't necessarily need to be carried on. Whereas fruits and vegetables and bread and proteins, I think those are, you know, gifts of the church that are, that are still needed in the church to edify the church in a really, in a really powerful way. So are miracles not possible anymore? No, miracles are very much possible. Okay. The difference between a, um, hey lady, you listening to me? Thank you, sweetheart. Uh, the difference between an apostle and just miracles in general is that an apostle could do uh, miracles regularly or all the time because they had a special gifting from uh, God in that way. To, to see someone who had an ailment and to heal them, they could do that because they were an apostle. But I think miracles still happen regularly. It's just not attached to one person who has that special ability uh, today. Does that make sense? So do healings really do happen in today's culture? Sure they do. Can God do a miracle today? Absolutely he can. Can he do a healing today? Absolutely he can. But what we're talking about is a function, a person who has a job description. Hey, you are going to bring healing to America. Eh, I don't think people are called to that specific role today. Does that make sense? All right. You all with me? You all understand? All right, good. That's all I got. <laughs> that, that took me all day to think about. No. All right, so we're going to take the offering. And for those of you who didn't get an apostle-like tr treat today, you can go up and get another piece of candy, okay? Uh, and take it with you. Assuming, of course, that your parents will give you the head nod when you go back to your seat and say, that was a good thing that you got one of those. All right, I need a volunteer for offering. Yes, you too, Mom. Come on up here. And I'll ask Elder Jeremy to come up and do the announcements for us, okay? Boy, can you hold on to all that stuff? You got that? All right. All right, let's pray. Father God, we thank you so much for today. Lord, we do thank you for uh, the apostles. We, we, thank, we know how special they were to us, how they energized us. We thank you for them. Lord, we do thank you for the healings and miracles and signs that you can still do today because you want to. We thank you for that as well. Lord, we pray for this uh, offering, that you would bless it and bless the gift and the giver. Lord, we just want to see your work move forward in a very profound way. I pray for all these things in Christ's name. Amen. All right, guys, go and grab another snack if you want.